Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own platform skirting using a 3D printer. Stick around. Okay, so the point of this video is to show you how to make your very own 3D printed platform skirts. And you can see here I've already started to sort of add some to the side of some 19 mil pine which I'm using as my platform base. Now these things are really, really easy to make if you've got a 3D printer, but today I'm gonna to show you how I go about printing my own very creation. Now these particular things will be made available to any Patreon of this channel. Now your support will go towards further improving the channel, but also towards further increasing the amount of 3D models that I can produce and then also make available via Patreon. So if you have a look in the link in the description, there is a link to Patreon, and if you pledge your support, you will get full access to this 3D printer file, as well as uh, the written setup instructions. And the, the advantage of 3D printing, quite simply, is that once you have the file, you can print as many as you require. And this video is gonna show you exactly how to do that. So let's head over to the 3D printer. So welcome to the Engine Shed 3D printer guide for the platform edging now available on Patreon. And to all of you patrons, thank you very much for your support. All the effort and all the funds raised from Patreon are gonna go straight back into the layout. It's gonna help me make these videos on a more regular basis. And it's also gonna help me produce some more models for you to use on your own layout. So stay tuned. If at any point you are confused and you need to revisit a few steps, pause the video and rewind and watch on repeat as much as you need to. 3D printing is a very satisfying thing when it is done right, but it requires a lot of patience and a lot of calibration. So, hopefully you enjoy this tutorial video, and hopefully you're able to produce the results that I get on this. The advantage of 3D printing is clear. For very little cost, over a long period, you can manufacture quite a substantial amount of scenery for a fraction of the cost that you would if you had to buy them in a pre-made kit. So, let's get started basically going to explain what I'm about to show you here, which is how to launch Cura and how to prepare the model ready to be sliced for your 3D printer. So what you want to do is in the top left hand corner there is an open file icon. We click on this and you're going to look for the file that you have extracted to your desktop. Once you've done this you can quite easily select those two files and once you do that Cura is going to open them and present them onto your 3D printer, uh, let's say, engine. So here we are, we've got platform skirt, we click open. And the first thing you'll notice is that the model appears on this build plate or 3D model of a printer that you may be using. Now it's important that before you start this that your 3D printer settings are set up and correctly set up. Um, I can't show you how to do that because people will use different 3D printers to me and uh, that's a discussion that is just too long for this video. So, please make sure that you've calibrated your machine and you've calibrated the Cura settings to suit your machine. Um, there are plenty of videos available on YouTube so I do encourage that you do go ahead and watch those before attempting to make this. So, we've opened Cura, we've opened the file, platform skirt, and this particular package comes with a platform skirt and uh, it's just a declining little slope that you can sand a piece of timber down to match. Uh, typical of most sort of British type of platforms should you want to go down that road. Of course you don't have to, but we're going to quickly discuss how you can modify the model. So you can see on the build plate you've got a yellow model which basically indicates that the model fits within the 3D printer build plate. If the model doesn't fit within the 3D build plate, you can rotate it. So what you need to do for that is you click on the yellow model and on the left hand side you will see there are icons. So from front to top, from top to bottom, you have move, scale, rotate, mirror, per model settings and support blocker. Okay. We are only going to focus on the rotate and scale options for today, but of course the move feature is pretty simple. You can click and drag the model to position it anywhere you like on the build plate and the 3D printer will therefore print it in that specific location. 
Um, it is of course important to remember that you need a 3D printer big enough to print this particular model and which is 250 millimeters long and 20 millimeters high and the depth you can set yourself with the scale setting which we're going to have a look at right now but before we do if you do have a 3D printer that is just a little bit too small to print this in OO scale you can rotate it 45 degrees to fit inside the build plate very very easy tip to get you out of trouble should you need to do that um, obviously I recommend you have a 3D printer big enough to print this in the first place but if that is not the situation of course there is always a workaround so the rotation tool is a very easy way to work around that spatial limitation so the next thing we're going to look at is the scale now the scale is the very simple modification uh, tool that I use to help mass produce these shall we say to a more refined standard so this particular model is 18 millimeters high in the y direction 200 millimeters long in the x direction and three millimeters deep in the z now the three millimeters you can check but before you do that to ensure that you're not proportionally outscaling the model you need to uncheck the uniform scaling option right here now once you do that you can modify the x y and z uh, factors independently of one another and that way it doesn't scale the whole model um, relative to those coordinates so for this particular one four millimeters is a good depth gets me a nice consistent depth and profile on the actual model itself uh, you can also change the height which is in the Y so I change that to 19 or 20 millimeters um, if you're using say timber platforms and you want to dress the outside with that you can just match the thickness of that so if you're using 18 millimeter MDF or 20 millimeter pine or 19 millimeter pine you can just very easily modify the Y value to suit that um, you don't need to worry about the percentages just leave those alone for now so we just set that to 19 millimeters and we just push enter and you'll see the percentage changes 200 millimeters is about where I'm happy with but of course if you want to reduce the size you can reduce the size down to 150 millimeters and it compresses the model just a little bit more so again that would be for somebody in a situation where the 3d printer just isn't big enough for a 200 long 200 millimeter long 3d model so once you've done that and you're happy with the overall aesthetic you can see the preview you can spin the whole thing around and just check to make sure that you're happy with how that looks once you're happy with that we can exit the scaling option and we can move over towards the important 3d printer machine settings that we're going to use for this particular print now it's important to mention at this point that all of my models are optimized to run on what I use is called a draft setting within the Cura file so if you're using the draft setting that gets a pretty satisfactory result for an OO scale model anything less than that just adds to the print time and we don't want to do that so we're not going to touch that so if you use 0.2 millimeter draft that's perfectly say, acceptable for OO scale so we're just going to leave that alone now in this particular model we don't need to use infill because it's such a shallow model so you don't need to worry about that now material settings this is important you need to make sure that your material is appropriate for this particular model all of my models are made with PLA so PLA you print between a range of 180 degrees to 220 degrees I personally find on my machine that 200 to 210 degrees is optimum to get the best results. Please make sure that your machine is calibrated to use your material. If you're using ABS, you will need to print it hotter. Likewise, if you're using PLA, you need to make sure it's calibrated properly and the nozzle is producing that material effectively. So please make sure that you ensure that that machine is calibrated to print the specific material of your choice. So we're going to run with 200 degrees, as is in the setup guide. Now, I also recommend that you use a 3D printer with a build plate, a heated build plate, I should say. What that ultimately means is that it's going to make your life easier in the long run um, with adhesion, because as these things print, a lot of moving parts, they can very easily peel off and cause a lot of problems. So to avoid that, a heated bed, heated to about 60 to 65 degrees is perfect for this particular model 
Flow, flow is how much material is moving through the nozzle during the print. If you leave that at 100%, you shouldn't have any problems. So we're just going to leave that alone. Okay, now that's the basic material settings. Obviously, you can tweak that a little bit more, but I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, it's not really necessary for this model. So we're going to move on to the speed. Now, the speed is the single most important factor involved in 3D printing. If you print something too fast, it is going to rip off the build plate and it is going to ruin your 3D print. So it is important that you go for a slow initial print speed and then you go for a moderate to a moderate fast overall print speed. The better the foundation, the better the grip on the build plate, the faster you can print these. <coughs> So when we get to speed, first thing we want to look at is the initial layer speed. Now for this particular model, I like to use 30 millimeters per second. This is obviously optimized for my printer, but 30 millimeters per second is a nice, slow, steady deposit of material that will get you a good grab on the build plate and ultimately ensure that the rest of the print is successful. 30 millimeters per second. Initial layer travel speed can be anything from 50 to 100. Again, it depends on your machine. But with uh, the initial layer, the rule of thumb is to use a slow speed. So 50 to 75 millimeters is pretty much where you want to be at. If you have a very capable machine, you can obviously push that up to 100. Now the overall print speed is how much the rest of the 3D print is going to print at after the initial layer. So if you leave it at 30 millimeters per second for the rest of the print, it's going to take six hours to print that tiny little piece. That's not what you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to bump that up to 75 millimeters per second and that'll get you a print of three of these in about one hour. Now you can of course tweak those settings to your liking and push that number down even more but these are the settings that I find get the best results. So 75 millimeters per second we're going to leave wall speed at 75 millimeters per second all of these are proportional to one another so you don't really need to mess with them as much travel speed at the rest of that you can push that up to 150 general rule of thumb with travel speed after the initial layer is you can add 50 millimeters per second on top of that and you'll have no issues whatsoever. So we're just going to leave that at 150. So now that's the speed sorted out. Next thing we're going to do, you want to make sure print cooling is enabled. If you don't have print cooling it's not the end of the world but it does mean that you're going to have to reduce the print speed overall. So if you don't have print cooling you should really look into getting print cooling because it's going to make the results a lot lot cleaner and a lot lot crisper. So ensure if you have it print cooling is turned on support now support for this model isn't necessary it's a big flat surface um, generally speaking you don't need support but in my models I like to use a skirt Now a skirt basically deposits a line around the overall material and it primes the extruder just before it starts to print now this is important because if you have a clogged extruder and you don't see the skirt you can tell straight away that the print isn't going to work and you can start again um, if you get a clean deposit and there's a nice clean line going around the thing it means your printer is calibrated correctly, the height of the build plate is correct, the temperature is correct and it's just a very good early warning detection system. So we're going to use a skirt. Um, outside of that there is nothing else to, to really consider with this particular model. It's a nice basic model. It's really really easy to print. Now when you're done with that at the very bottom right hand corner of Curo there is a prepare button so we're just going to click prepare and you'll see it loads and once it finishes loading you'll see the save to file option so when you're ready to save it to file you can save it to file you can name it whatever you like and save it to the USB and load it onto your machine from there you're ready to print so we're now going to move over to the 3D printer and we'll get started 3D printing this file so once you make it over to your 3D printer, if your 3D printer looks like this, you can load the file and start printing and you'll see that the bed temperature is going to start climbing and then the nozzle. Now before you do this, you want to make sure that your build plate is nice and clean, clear of any debris, clear of anything of that nature and also you want to make sure that the nozzle is clear of any debris as well. So you can see this particular printer that I'm using has got print cooling on either side and basically that means it cools the material before it goes over and it stabilizes the print as the printer moves across like so. The next thing you want to make sure you do is get good build adhesion. 
Now for me, I like to use an extra hold hairspray. Hairspray is a very inexpensive bond. It gets a good stick to the build plate on top of the heat. Um, you want to use extra hold or even just the cheap nasty stuff works well as well. But um, extra hold hairspray ensures that the print sticks to the bed throughout the whole duration of your 3D print. Now once that's done, you're ready to wait for this particular thing to heat up. And once it's ready to go, you've started your 3D print. So once your printer's bedded in, you can easily see, I've only got three printing here at the moment, and we're about one hour in. You can print three really high quality. You see this down here, this is what's called artifacting. This is why it's so important to ensure that your printer is calibrated and the bed is clean. Um, that's very easy, that's just a bit of curling. We can just easily file that off and that shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully your results are as successful as mine, but as always you can tweak your machine just to get the best possible results. Hopefully you enjoy these platform edges and just keep printing them. Um, usually no more than three to four at a time and you can get really good results. So hopefully you enjoy your 3D printed platform edges. Um, thank you very much for your support and stay tuned for the next 3D printer release.